Pisces, it's me, Stormy, and here's your horoscope for April 2018. So before we jump in, Pisces, there are now two, an a.m. and a p.m. summer session for the Astrology 101 classes. I know some of you, it's best to study during the summertime hours. So now you've got not only a summertime class, but two different time options so you can figure out which one works best for you. We're kicking off in June and we're going to study all of June, all five weeks. So get signed up before these spots are filled. All Everything is in the description box down below or come visit me at stormygrace.com. All right, Pisces, so coming into this month, we're rolling in with our communication planet Mercury still in retrograde. So it went retrograde last month. It's still happening right now. <laughs> and it's in the sign of Aries. So it is taking up this second house space for you. So there's been a lot of rethinking, re-editing, re-evaluating, reconnecting, reunioning with not only your budget, your finances, um, maybe even people in your life from your past, because Mercury likes to bring people and relationships from the past back into our lives. And we're considering, does this still have value in my life? So a lot of things from the past connected to the past and re-looking have been in your evaluation boat for several weeks right now. Now, it's still going to be true for the first 15 days that we come into April. But starting at the beginning of the month here on the 2nd, we see Mars, our action planet, in a conjunction, so sharing space with Saturn, our discipline planet, here in the sign of Capricorn. Now, typically, these two get together and it can be a little bit rough. It's parent-child relationship where it's like, I do what I want, and Saturn's like, no, you don't. But in this particular respect, they're actually working together together because they're in the sign of Capricorn and who wants to achieve, wants to do something with all of this energy that we've got going on. So everybody's on pretty good behavior here. For you, this lights up the 11th house, the social space. Now I feel like for you, Pisces, for so many of you, this is a space where it's not just about being social, having friends, which of course, Mercury is retrograde. You're reevaluating things that are valuable to you. You're reevaluating your self-esteem. You may have friends, boyfriends, jobs, or opportunities come back into your life and you go, oh yeah, I felt good here. I was happy here. Uh, my self-esteem was better here. You may be reevaluating those things. So it could be social at that level as well. But the other thing is, is that I feel like this is just telling you not to hide not to hide. This energy is saying, let's get out there, let's get into this social zone, whether it be online, with people, new networking groups, new groups of people maybe we work with, branching off into new friendships or new connections. It's springtime, let's get out here and see what's been brewing all winter long, you know what I'm saying? But whatever it is, you're starting to get a lot more social and Mars and Saturn want to help here. They want to create something solid for you. Now, between the fourth and the fifth, this merge Mercury that's retrograde over here in that second house is going to come into a square, a hard aspect with this conjunction between Mars and Saturn. Now the square in astrology says, I want action now. I want your attention. Fix me now. It's not like an opposition that takes a while. So this is going to spark and emote something from you. You are going to be put in a position to take action in some way, shape, or form. But what's great about it is that while it can feel heavy and it can feel like ultimately the energy is saying, I need you to grow up. I need you to take some different actions. If you don't value these people, if you don't value value this um, long range goal, if you don't value this organization, get rid of it. Stop showing up here. Grow up. This is your world. No victim life here. If this isn't good for you, stop doing it. But it also says if this is good for you, you got to keep doing it. You got to keep showing up. You can't hide, right? So the energy can feel heavy, but what it's trying to help you do is dig into this determination, dig into the goal, achieve the goal. Right? Where are you trying to get? What's the long range goal? What kind of friends do you want? What kind of um, value system do you want to have in your life? Whatever it is, if you keep that strong work ethic or that strong ethic, this helps things to unfold beautifully for you because you have the determination and action to make it happen and the discipline. Now, this is further supported on the 14th while Jupiter is retrograde in Scorpio, but in a sextile to Pluto, who's over here in Capricorn in your 11th as well. Now, Jupiter is over here in the 9th house, right? 
and then you've got this Pluto energy over here in the 11th house in a sextile. The sextile says this is a talent, an opportunity, something easy, but you will intelligently do something or take the opportunity. So somewhere between the 9th house of faith and the 11th house of friendships and long range goals, you are ready to take a new opportunity. Maybe this involves travel. Um, it can in involve teaching, um, learning, certifications, any of these kinds of things that would put you naturally in contact with new groupings of people or, or friendships, even friendships that have come back around or opportunities that have come back around, you will not have to force them. They will happen naturally. Success is here if you just take positive action. All you have to do is show up to a sextile, willing to put a little bit of effort in, and things usually unfold very positively. So there could certainly be new friendships or new developments or foreign travel definitely on the agenda. Now on the 15th, we see Mercury coming out of retrograde and getting ready to move direct. Now Mercury's not fully out of its shadow time until May 3rd, so keep that in mind. But most of the um, retrograde drama will be sealed up here around the 15th. At the same time, it's sharing space with the new moon happening in Aries as well. So giving a boost of springtime refreshment <laughs> to your second house. Finances, money could be coming your way. Your self-esteem is coming up a notch. Um, you're surrounding yourself with things that you actually find value in. You have a talent or a skill. Someone's acknowledging it and you're making money from it. Whatever it is, there is a value bump that comes into your life that's really beautiful and I think helps your self-esteem for sure. On the 17th, now on the 17th, Saturn is going to go retrograde. On the 22nd, Pluto goes retrograde. These are pretty subtle energies, but I think that they are important because what they're asking us to do will have a response in September. We better show up with a response in September or things feel really hard. Now, the first few months of the year could have felt very hard or very heavy or stuck or confusing with Saturn moving into Capricorn. But while Saturn was going direct, it's showing you, it's saying, hey, in this 11th house business that we've got going on right here, these friends, this long range goals, your connection to social groups or your lack of connection to social groups, these are things that are not working. Here, I'm gonna show you what's not working, which maybe we need to detach from, reevaluate, or look at your own part in, right? Like, why don't you have friends in your life? Things like that, whatever it is. Saturn was trying to show you, and Pluto was saying, okay, Pisces, in order for us to be successful here, the old you, this old situation has to die off so a new one can live. Now, when they go retrograde, Pluto gives you a beautiful space for house cleaning. Let these old things go. Let these old hurts, these old behaviors, allow something new to grow. That is where you are empowered. Forgive, right? If that's something that needs to be happening. And then Saturn says, I'm going to take a nap. And when I wake up, I hope that you will have had some maturity come to you and you can show me how you've made changes in this zone because I showed you exactly what was wrong. Now, did you take action on that? Forgive it, heal it, step up to it, stop hiding from it. Whatever it is in this 11th house, when we get to September, you will see that hopefully this area looks different. You look more invested. You look more involved in it. It looks different because in September, when our planets wake back up, they're going to go, oh, you did a little something. How great. Let me help you move this right along then. Or, oh, you didn't do anything. This is going to be painful, right? So we want to be using, it's a subtle energy, but man, it is that small, subtle, if you think about it, it's that small, subtle energy that kind of can just drive you a little bit crazy or make you feel internally off. So we want to be responding definitely to what these planets are trying to help us get to in our lessons. They're just trying to show us our lessons so that we can be that best version of ourselves. 
Now on the 24th, Venus is going to move over into Gemini, into your fourth house. Venus in the fourth house is wonderful. It brings love home. It brings loving communication at home. If things have been stressful at home or if things have been stressful within the family, home, family, real estate, property, your internal foundations, feeling like maybe you don't have anybody to talk to, you don't have a foundation of your own, this is a wonderful energy because I think it helps you feel a little bit more connected or make some connections. If you are trying to sell a home or something like that, this also brings that nice magnetism to the table as well. So whatever it is, Venus is trying to bring some sensuality, some luxury, some diplomacy, and definitely some harmony and heck yeah, some money to this fourth house space. <laughs> so you could be finding home with more women as well in your world and having more conversations. So beautiful energy. As we end the month here on the 29th, we've got a full moon happening at six degrees of Scorpio with a positive aspect to the Sun-Saturn trine that is also happening, helping us again get things done deep looking, deep cleaning so that we can clean these cobwebs out of all of these different areas and move forward. Now this specifically is happening in your ninth house. So again, this space of you may be expanding your faith faith may really be growing. The old faith that you had six months ago won't work. It's time to let it get bigger. Let's let's take a few more risks, Pisces. Let's get out there. Let's, let's challenge ourselves. Let's travel. Let's speak another language. Let's teach something. Let's get ourselves out into the world. Let's broadcast differently than we ever have been before. So for some of you, if you're writing that book, trying to do that podcast, whatever it is, this could be a time where you actually see something launching out, which is very cool. Something could be coming to a culmination and it's time to ride the wave but whatever it is I think the message for you this month Pisces is don't hide get out there get social let us see you bring that beautiful self-esteem that you have and your values so that you know who you should be running with who's going to pump you up build you up and be team Pisces as well and support that dream so Pisces, I love you so much. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I will see you next month. And I look forward to seeing what you get into this month. So leave it in the description box down below, okay? Bye, Pisces.